It's five times y'all shot her. Five times. And again, why? Mitz has been looking for that answer since April of 2020. I'll never, ever stop fighting to get justice for her. Alexis was cooling in her vehicle at about 1 a.m. on April the 17th, 2020, talking to a friend via video chat and listening to music. She went inside to use the bathroom at about 1.20 a.m. She came back in the house at about 1.21 a.m. Then she went back to her vehicle. An unknown suspect opened fire, striking Alexis multiple times while she sat in her car. The suspect fled the scene before 12 arrived. Jackie didn't hear the gunfire, but other people in the house did. However, nobody went outside. Jackie woke up at about 3 a.m. due to a loud commotion. A strange female she didn't know was at the house. She said Alexis was badly injured. Jackie said the female had been sent to the home by the friend Alexis was on the phone with when the shooting occurred. The home surveillance system captured one of the last images of her alive. Alexis was discovered in her vehicle unresponsive. She was declared dead on arrival. Her mother, Jackie Pitts, believed whoever killed her daughter was close to her and knew she was in her vehicle at the time. If you know, heard, or seen who shot Alexis, please send me or her family a message. Thanks. This surveillance video capturing one of the last moments she was alive. Alexis Accord's mother says she thinks her daughter's death might have been a setup. In a story you will only see right here, 41 Action reporter Sarah Plake breaks down what we know and what questions family members and officers still have. The mother of two was murdered while she was sitting in her car outside her own house. And her mother says this was so brazen an act, more than one person has to know what happened and she's urging them to come forward. 21-year-old Alexis Accord was just starting her life. She had two jobs, taking care of two babies, surrounded by a tight-knit family. Rin. Now her family is demanding justice for her murder. Her face on t-shirts, signs, posters, and all over the house, a daily reminder. I don't understand what she could have possibly done to lose her life in such a a horrible way. Accord was sitting in her car around 1 a.m. on Friday, April 17th, talking to a friend on FaceTime and listening to music. The home security video shows one of the last images of her alive. She comes inside to use the restroom at about 1.20. Um, she exits my house on my cameras at 1.21 and goes back to her car. Accord would never get out of her car again. Someone shot through the windows, killing her in the driver's seat. Yeah. It, it was like it was almost set up. Almost. Their security video wasn't wide enough to capture the suspect. However, a neighbor's surveillance might have the answer. Police gave us this screenshot showing a car they believe could be involved. Somebody showed up, shot her and left right away. Like there, there was a purpose behind it. We don't know the purpose. We don't uh, know why this would happen. Police have subpoenaed cell phone information from certain individuals, hoping it'll lead them to a suspect. I would have done whatever I could to protect her because Lord knows I would take her place in a heartbeat. Now a court's parking spot is a memorial, but again, that daily reminder for friends and family to keep pushing. New tonight, a renewed push for justice three years after a young mother was murdered. Good evening, I'm Emily Hallwick. Family and friends of Alexis Accord spent hours out in the cold today, passing out flyers hoping to find her killer. KBC 9's Peyton Headley is live in Raytown tonight, and Peyton, they say they will not stop until they get answers. Right, Emily, and today they handed out more than 250 of these flyers at this intersection here reading Justice for Lexi. It's been now almost three years since they've lost their mother, a daughter, a friend, and they're hoping that these flyers will help bring them answers. Thank you so much. I just want you to take pictures and share it. For every car that stops. Share this anywhere you can. And each window that rolls down. This is for my daughter's unsolved homicide in Grandview, Missouri. Justice is one step closer for Alexis Accord. That's my daughter. 
She was murdered in 2020. The mother of two would have turned 24 years old today. Bless your heart, bless your heart, baby. She was beautiful, she was my best friend. Standing for hours in the cold along 50 Highway in Raytown, family and friends spent her birthday looking for the person who killed her. We just need your help. This is how her mother, Jackie Mitz, says she'll spend every January 14th until she gets justice for her daughter. All I can do is come out here and do this and hope that I reach somebody somewhere that wants to tell the truth. You're beautiful, you got this, you're strong. Accord was sitting in her Grandview driveway late one Friday night when someone shot her five times. Five times y'all shot her, five times. And again, why? Mitz has been looking for that answer since April of 2020. I'll never, ever stop fighting to get justice for her. There you go, baby. Peyton Headley, KNBC 9 News. Wow, there is a $2,500 reward for tips leading to an arrest. If you know anything, call the Crime Stoppers Tips hotline 816-474-T9. Grandview police tell us they currently have no suspect information, but leads. Now her dad, he's hoping someone will come forward and take responsibility for what he calls a senseless death. It was the wee hours Friday morning. Grandview police say they were dispatched to the area of 133rd and 15th Street around 3:10 a.m. 21-year-old Alexis Accord found shot to death in a car. After hearing the news, her father rushing to town from St. Louis. He says the past 24 hours has been a nightmare. It's devastating. I mean, it's it's uh been through a lot in life and it's, there's nothing that can prepare you for something like this. You know, everybody's kind of tight lips, so not knowing is even worse. You know, there's, there's just no words to prepare anybody for something like this. Also dealing with coronavirus concerns, the family is trying to work through funeral arrangements. A court leaves behind two small children, ages two and four. So this seems like it was somebody she knew, okay? So this seems like it was a back door, okay? And then back doors when somebody you know, your friend, Somebody that's pretending to be cool with you or pretending to be a friend set you up. That's the back door, okay? And it seems like that was the case right here, okay? Um, I'm not 100% sure, but I got a strong feeling this wasn't just random or just a stranger coming by, you know, like a random act. This was somebody that pre planned this, that knew her. Now, I'm wondering. What did this young lady do to bring somebody over to her house blicking, okay? Because I seen her and she wasn't throwing up any gang signs, so she wasn't in the gang. And um, it looked like she was just going to work and stuff, so, and caring for her family, you know, loving her family. So I don't see why somebody would come over there and start shooting, okay? It just doesn't make any sense, all right? Because like I say, she wasn't out there gangbanging. Um, I believe if she had a, some type of feud or dispute with somebody, her family would have knew about it. So whoever did this was somebody that was you know, just hating on her, holding hate inside, and then just, yeah, we're cool, we're cool, mm -hmm, yeah. Just that type of person, you know. Be cool with you on the outside, but hate your guts on the inside. There's people like that out here, and I believe that was, uh, this was, this came from somebody like that, okay? Now, her mother is trying to find out what, you know, who did this, what happened, you know, who was this? I seen an image of a car, you know. Um, and the way people talk, somebody know who did this, all right? Because back in the 80s and 90s, it wasn't as much bragging as it is nowadays. Well, people was bragging a lot in the 90s, kind of. So, but in the 80s, people would really weren't bragging about this type of stuff back then. Now, people got to brag about this type of stuff, okay? Whoever done this, they didn't talk to somebody else about this and people know what happened, the whole story, you know, 
more of what the story than what I know, you know. And they'll, you know, they may even come to this story. Oh, this is what, you know. Well, let us know what happened because her mother wants to know what happened. If you know what happened, let her mother know, okay? Don't live with this on your conscience. Let this go because when you hold these type of secrets on your conscience and you grow old, it's not good. You know, they're, they're going to keep you know coming back to bother you haunt you until you release it let it go you know so something like this somebody know who did this and uh, like i said this was a back door i believe she know who did this and um they said that 12 checked her like records phone records social media records you know a certain individual so um they had some type of idea you know kind of what direction to go but i believe yeah um warning comes before destruction so whoever did this most definitely put in at least one threat or you know was talking crazy or you know it's the type of person that get real disrespectful with you you know somebody that just draw attention to themselves for that type of behavior so like I said, if you know something about this or you know what happened, please uh, let me or her family know because uh, her mother, um, she's not going to stop until she finds out what happened, okay? So, um, um, if you know something, please let us know, all right? All right, now... Long live Alexis Accord. I'm out of here.